Number 105. Describe the molecular structure around the indicated atom or atoms, and then we have to find the molecular structure for the chlorine atom in chloric acid, which is HClO3, but it's more known as written as HOClO2. Okay, so we have to describe the molecular structure or the molecular geometry. And that's where this big chart comes into play. Now you might have to memorize these depending on if your teacher or professor is not giving them to you on your test or quiz. Um, so my advice would to just kind of be using flashcards and do as many practice problems as you can to just get familiar with your structures. But if you want to figure out what type of geometry HClO3 has, the best thing to do is to just take a second and draw the Lewis structure. The Lewis structure is going to tell you a lot of information and molecular geometry, molecular structure is one of them. Now they do give us a little hint here as to how we're gonna draw it. There's tons of videos on this channel just designated to drawing Lewis structures and I go every step of the way there for you guys. So if you do need more help, you could always check them out. But this one will kind of be like a quick inversion. So you could pause the video and just see if your Lewis structure matches mine. Now I'm going to follow this uh, idea here. Well, we have a hydrogen bound to an oxygen, which is bound to a chlorine. So I have hydrogen all the way out, which is bound to an oxygen, which is bound to a chlorine. And then that chlorine, if I look over, it says O2. So that chlorine has to have two oxygens. So, you know, whether you want to put your oxygens like one and two, doesn't really matter. I guess we'll do that, right? Or we could do one and two. It doesn't matter to me. So for drawing your Lewis structures, you could draw them, you know, how you, how you like them. So we'll draw it like that. Now we got to start adding the uh, bonds. So we know that we have to have at least a single bond going on here. However, to get the octet on the oxygens, keep in mind that oxygen had six valence electrons. So it needs one electron to get the uh, single bond. However, in order to get that octet, I do need to have one more bond for the oxygens that are just hanging on by a thread with the chlorine. Now, the reason being is that if we do this now, Oxygen will use two of its electrons to get the double bond, and then there's four left over because that's a total of six valents that oxygen had. And if we look back now, now the oxygen has a octet, two, four, six, eight. So we'll do the same on this side. And this oxygen as well has the four electrons, and chlorine on the periodic table has seven valence electrons. It's used one, two, three, four, five. So it just needs one more. And now we're good. Just know that chlorine being the center atom can have an expanded octet. It is one of the elements that is allowed to have an expanded octet. And in this case, the chlorine has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons, and that's totally fine. A max of twelve. So now, here comes the chart. So they want us to find out what the molecular geometry for chlorine is. So we just have to take into consideration the number of total atoms and the lone pairs. So if we're zoning in on the chlorine, we just have to see what's going on around the chlorine. So in this case, I have one oxygen that's bound to the chlorine. I have another oxygen that's bound to a chlorine, and I have another oxygen. Take note that we don't care about the hydrogen because the hydrogen is not directly bound to the chlorine. So for the molecular geometry, we have three atoms. And now let's just see, do I have any lone pairs? Yes, I do. I have one lone pair that's directly bound to the chlorine. So I have to write that down. Now the thing here is that we just need to find the total number, whether we have total of two all the way to six. So if I have three atoms and one lone pair, I just have to add them together and I have four total things. 
That's the number that you're looking for on the... Whoop. That's the number that you're looking for on the side. So here we are, we're at number four. And now we just take note whether we're at one lone pair, zero, you know, two, three, four. And we said that we had one lone pair. So four and one lone pair is called trigonal pyramid. Generally in more, uh, more classes than not, what I've seen actually is using the word trigonal Oh, uh, trigonal, pyramidal. So that's the word that I'm going to use because when I was learning this information, um, we used that word. But, I mean, your class might use trigonal pyramid, and that's the same exact thing. But I just want to show you that... What happened here? This is going to, this is going to kill me. Okay, that's good. I just wanted to show you that you could have different words. So trigonal pyramid is fine. Trigonal pyramidal, they mean the same thing. And just know that your bond angles between the three bonds are a little bit less than 109.5 uh, because you have a lone pair. Once you start adding lone pairs, the bond angles are going to get a little shorter because you want to maximize the size around the lone pair. And that's basically it. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for viewing the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, your support means a lot to us. My brother and I, we really do appreciate all of you guys that have supported us, have left kind comments in the comments section. We love getting back to you uh, and talking to you guys. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I'll talk to you later, okay? All right, bye-bye.